All right, guys, so Kanye West just dropped his Vultures project with Ty Dolla, and the album is full of very obvious disses, along with some we can read between the lines type of disses. Now, you guys really seem to like it when I take a new album and break down all these little references for you, so I decided to do the same with this album. And as you guys know, Kanye had a bunch of stuff to talk about for this project, and he's coming in pretty unfiltered. Track one, stars. So right off rip, Kanye comes in with a line that got a lot of people bent out of shape where he has a reference to Jewish people. Keep a few Jews on the staff now. I cash out. So people like Anthony Fantano got super bent out of shape when they heard this line. Keep a few Jews on the staff now. Okay, so pause. And literally out of the gate, I'm being hit with, I'm gonna come through and just black out just blackout, keep a few Jews on the staff now. I don't get how that's anti-Semitic though. Like to me, this is just him empowering his people. Like they can work for us too. We can start our own corporations. We can do it on our own. This is the way I'm seeing this line. I don't I don't see it as anti-Semitic at all. We finna go where the stars at and beyond that. This that rip up the contract. So again, he's just empowering his own fucking people. Like, we're ripping up the contracts, we're going to the stars, we can do this shit on our own. That's what people don't like about Kanye. He goes against the status quo. He goes against the grain. And people don't like it. Track 2, Keys to My Life. So, the first verse in its entirety is about Kim Kardashian. Slow down, you on your way to an overdose. Plus these texts getting way too emotional. Way too much time alone. Kanye talks about how they both spent so much time working and how they spent a lot of time apart because of it. Look at what I stumbled on. Another nigga chilling on your couch with pajamas on. This line is very likely a reference to Kim's relationship with Pete Davidson, where Kim posted photos online of them wearing matching pajamas. Pete Davidson's roster of women is fucking stacked. I don't know how he does it. Like, the dude is the dude's batting out of his league all the time, and his relationships only last like a month, but he gets in there. He gets in the mix for a little bit. Thought I was the only one. How dare you have a nigga in your house eating Papa John's? So again, a reference to Pete Davidson, but I also found this interesting tweet from Papa John's where they posted, buy her pizza or Pete Davidson will. Fuck Papa John. Fuck you, Papa John's. Ever since I lost my mom, you was like my foster mom. Homie like your only son. When Kanye lost his mother, Kim somewhat filled that void of just being another woman that he could confide in and trust. So that entire first verse is about, you know, his disbelief and how this relationship fell apart. And it seems like at some point down the line, she broke the trust. How it sound when you get easy over tempo. In the second verse, we get a quick shout out for Timbaland, who produced the beat. Now I can't just take it on the chin like Jay Leno. So yes, Jay Leno is definitely known for his large chin, but after 20 plus years, his show was canceled by NBC. And who are the executives of NBC? I'm not even going to answer it. You guys are going to have to figure it out. I ever tell you what they said to me? I said, I'm number one. You know what they said? <laughs> Check. We want what's above number one. No. Yes. Yes. So Kanye is basically saying he's not going to be canceled so easily. He's not going to take it on the chin like Jay Leno did. Track five, Back to Me. On this one, Kanye has a subliminal shot for none other than Drake. Put nerves on the map. Now this Urkel in your bitch. Kanye has referred to Drake as a nerd in the past. Back in 2021, Drake had dissed Kanye on a trippy red track called Betrayed. 45, 44, Burnt let it go. You ain't changing shit for me, it's set in stone. Two days after that track was released, Kanye took to Instagram to share a group chat that had eight people in it saying, I've been fucked with by nerd ass jocks like you my whole life. And the whole Urkel reference is in reference to Drake playing Steve Urkel at SNL. Y'all got any cheese? <laughs> and in my view, it's even more clearly about Drake when Kanye says, I put nerds on the map, as Kanye was one of the first big artists to work with Drake way back in the day. That's when you're the prettiest. I hope that y'all don't take it wrong. Track six, Hoodrat. 
I really like this. I thought it was dope that Kanye used the snippet of Mike Tyson talking about him. No doubt he got some mental fucking issues. Most leaders do. The delusional issue. I'm a god. And what Mike is saying is not wrong. In fact, one of my favorite artists out of Canada right now, he just dropped a new album, and on that album, he had a really similar line to what Mike Tyson said. They call Kanye crazy, but shit. Who don't want to be a billionaire to see Jesus in himself? I'll wait. And I'm actually going to pin Quake Matthews' album in the comments section for you guys to check out. And I'd encourage you to do so, because it... It is a phenomenal project. Track seven, do it. You don't like it, that's your loss. Your opinion don't change the show costs. Again, Kanye alludes to the fact that he can't be canceled. However, just a week ago, he took to Instagram claiming that no arenas or stadiums would book him for any shows anymore. And when I call, people say there's no avails for me. And you know why that is. So if there's anybody out there that can help with this, please do. However, after posting that video, Kanye later shared a series of posts that would suggest that he was now getting inquiries from all over the world. When he spoke with his agent, Carol Lewis, he asked her how many offers did we receive since I posted the video? And she replied, crazy amount, nonstop, all over the world. We'll send new offers and avails tomorrow. I mean, it's a big fucking world, man. Like, maybe in America, yeah, his his shows will slow down, but globally, he's gonna be fine. Like, he'll he'll fill a worldwide tour, no issue. Southside do a die, shot town, top five, four, three, two, one. Who am I? Yay. Kanye again has a little subliminal shot for Drake, as on many occasions, Drake has claimed to be somewhere on a top five list. And you guys could say I'm reaching and call me a yoga instructor and all that fucked up shit you say to me in the comments. But you got to remember that Drake had a bunch of subliminals for Kanye as of late. So if you really think Kanye is not going to say anything back, you're fucking bugging. Of course he is. Track nine, Burn. Who's not entertained by my pain? Who ain't cash a check on my name? In the first line, Kanye alludes to the fact that every time something happens in his life, whether it be a public outburst or him just expressing his opinion, the entire world is entertained by it. In the second line, he points out just how many people have made cash off his name. This could be a reference to anything from the paparazzi, to Def Jam, to the various corporations that he's worked with over the years. I burn eight billion to take off my chains. In 2022, Adidas cut ties with Kanye after his very public remarks a deal potentially valued at $6.5 billion. Kanye suggests that it was his choice to end the deal and that he burned $8 billion. The reference to taking off the chains would appear to mimic Kanye's complaint that Adidas restricted his creativity. Another obvious reference would be with respect to slavery, where Kanye felt like a slave to these brands. And it could also be a reference to Dave Chappelle's bit where he talked about how Kanye was saying that millionaires don't wear chains. Uh, Kanye said, only millionaires wear chains. They said, what? He said, I'm a billionaire. Billionaires don't wear their money on their body. I took my chain and I said, oh, snap. To who would make a son the CEO of the firm? It's not some whisper to share with Big Worm. Kanye takes a shot at former Adidas CEO, Casper Rorstead. It was reported that Adidas had lost over $540 million after cutting ties with Kanye and the Yeezy line. Casper, being the CEO, clearly had a lot of involvement in the choice to cut Kanye loose, and after the Adidas stock tanked, Casper was relieved from his position as CEO. And whether you agree with Kanye or not, that's fine, but it gotta be a pretty damn good feeling to know that the dude that was plotting against you, his plot against you, was his demise at the end of the day. Man, the world gone mad. Her R. Kelly in the next Balenciaga ad. Kanye plays off the Balenciaga ad scandal where they had children posing in very inappropriate attire. He clowns the overall brand by claiming that R. Kelly would be in their next ad. And I don't think I need to explain what R. Kelly is all about. When you say teenage, how old are we talking? Girls who are teenagers. What's even more interesting is his ex-wife Kim initially cut ties with Balenciaga after the scandal, but just one month ago decided to re-sign with them 
and is now their brand ambassador. So it's a it's a triple, really. He's taken a shot at Balenciaga, he's taken a shot at R. Kelly, and he's taken a shot at his wife. Track 11, Vultures. I'm anti-Semitic, I just fucked a Jewish bitch. The line is funny, come on. Like, people, people gotta lighten up. I just fucked Scooter's bitch and we ran her like a lead biscuit. Kanye takes a shot at his former manager, Scooter Braun, who along with his ex-wife, just so happens to be Jewish. Scooter went through a very rocky public divorce with his wife back in 2021, and Kanye fired him as his manager back in 2018. So Kanye's just trolling the guy and, and, and fucking with his head. Track 12, Carnival. Now I'm Yay Kelly, bitch. Now I'm Bill Cosby, bitch. Now I'm Puff Daddy Rich. Kanye compares himself to R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, and Puff, three extremely controversial individuals who have all been essentially canceled. So Kanye is also very controversial. So I, I feel like he's just trolling here again by th lumping himself in with those guys, basically saying that you can't cancel me. I mean, sis, Taylor Swift, since I had the rolling on the wrist, I'm the new Jesus, bitch, I turn water to Chris. So again, he's bringing up like one of his controversial moments, the Taylor Swift shit, where he's saying like, it didn't impact me. It did nothing. I'm fine. This for what they did to Chris. They can't do shit with this. Kanye references how the media treated Chris Brown over the years when it came to the Rihanna incident and that they can't pull the same shit on him. And it's crazy because they still to this day in the media label Chris Brown as this abusive fucking type of dude. And I'm not co-signing anything that happened back then, but it was 15 years ago. The dude was 19 years old. I mean, it's time to let the man live a little bit, right? Got my kids in a fake school. We ain't... Kanye did mention in the past that he did not like the fact that his kids went to Sierra Canyon, which is basically a school for a bunch of rich celebrity kids. I mean, some of the kids that went to this school is like Will Smith's kids, LeBron James, Kevin Hart. I even read that Denzel Washington coached the grade eight basketball team one year. Track 15, Problematic. When I speak my mind, it's gonna be some lawsuits and furniture moving. Kanye references the repercussions that came from speaking his mind. The results of his 2022 blow up included multiple lawsuits and his reference to moving furniture would be in reference to his divorce with Kim. One of the main reasons why they split, according to Kim, was that she had to constantly do damage control for the crazy things that he would say. I spent hours and hours and hours of my days as the cleanup crew. Can someone explain to me why the fuck she talks like that? Like, I know women that I've known my whole life at the age of 30 years old, they're changing the way that they talk to mimic what they see on that show or hear on that show. Like that constipated way of speaking. And like some of these women I know, like grew up, these girls grew up on baked beans and craft dinner <laughs> and they're trying to act like they're from the Valley because of that show. I think it's pretty funny. And I get it. Japan just to be secluded. Over the years, Japan has become somewhat of an escape for Kanye. After his incident with Taylor Swift at the VMAs, that's exactly where he went. And after his 2022 blowout, he went there again. They did no damage. Would I give him no chances? He again, he's talking about the repercussions of his actions didn't impact his life that much. I'm not racist, it's a preference. And my bitch looking like a reference. Over the years, people have given Kanye a hard time for his interracial relationships. His current wife, Bianca, is indeed a white woman. And when he says, my bitch looking like a reference, he's likely referring to the fact that many people compare Bianca with Kim in terms of how they look. And I quote, it's only one goat, let you have your fun, no. Kanye dishes out another subliminal shot for Drake, where on his recent record first-person shooter, he makes mention specifically about being the GOAT. Who the GOAT? Who the GOAT? Album for album, uh, tit for tat, Kanye. Kanye destroys Drake, in my opinion. Wish somebody would've warned us when I was 15, my soulmate wasn't born yet. Kanye references the age gap between himself and his current girl, given the fact that he's 46 and she's 29. Without the deals, I guarantee I'm still nigger rich. In the line, Kanye states that even without the Balenciaga, Adidas, and large corporation deals, he would still be rich compared to most of his people historically. 
That line actually reminds me of a J. Cole record off his, his second album. I mean the type of niggas that laugh at whole money. Billionaires with petroleum and coal money. Track 16, King. Crazy. At the semi. So right off rip, Kanye makes mention to some of the names that he's been called over the years in the media. And look, me personally, I am bipolar. I've told you this before. And when Kanye first got diagnosed like years back and he was embracing it and he was wearing it and he was to have someone of such stature, especially a, a, an idol of mine, uh, come forward. Like for people who are bipolar, it made us really proud to have someone like him speak out for us. And, you know, when he pulled back on it and said that he, he didn't have it, it was kind of disappointing for me. I feel like you um, feel like being bipolar is part of what makes you brilliant, part of what makes you you, and you embrace it. Yeah. They thought headlines was my crit night. And I mean, the dude is right. Their plan to get rid of him didn't fucking work. I mean, I'm talking about his album right now. It clearly didn't work. Guess a real nigga couldn't take no more, huh? Niggas mad cause they can't talk to you no more, huh? In the first line, Kanye makes it known that he could not sit back in silence any longer, he couldn't take it anymore, and that he had to speak out. The second line about not being able to talk to Ye anymore would likely be in reference to people like Pusha T and Jay-Z, who have decided to distance themselves from Kanye due to the things that he said. Papa Bussy, love me, they show up to everything. I can play you double, let me put you on the team. So it's no surprise that the paparazzi follows Kanye everywhere he moves, and the second line, I can pay you double, let me put you on the team, is in reference to a recent encounter he had with paparazzi, where he said those exact same words. Melanie Flood, what's your address? What you making here? I'll pay you double what they pay you. Woo! You know, Eminem once said to Joe Budden that all he ever wanted to do was pump his own gas to fill his car up with gas, something that we do all the time that he can't do. And when it comes to the paparazzi in America, I mean, it's it should be illegal what they do. Like, the way that they treat celebrities is fucking insane. It shouldn't. I'm surprised it's legal. All that word of mouth couldn't take me out. Ha, ha. After all of that, your kids in the house going crazy. In this line, Kanye sends a shot at Kim Kardashian, who once spoke out against his anti-Semitic remarks, but even after all that... His kids were still acting out, and Kanye even shared a story on his Instagram about how his daughter North ripped up the couches in Kim's home to be with her father. And that is pretty much it. That's all I could find. You guys could leave it in the comment section if I missed anything. And also, go check out my Mob Deep versus Tupac video. I just put it out. It took me a month to put it together. It's one of my better videos. Definitely check it out if you're into that era of hip-hop. The guy did a good job. He did. He did a good job with that. It came across my feet. Good to see it edited correctly. Here, what's the dirt? Bitch, I'm about to blow up.